everyone, this is Catherine O'Connell and welcome to Lawyer On Air. If you are looking for inspirational stories about women in law, then this is the podcast for you. Join me and my lawyer ladies as we enjoy a glass of wine after a hard day at work and talk about the world of women in law. It's my passion to share stories of amazing legal ladies who are working as in-house legal counsel, who have law firm roles, who are leading on boards and who are doing law differently. From time to time, I will also invite special guests on the show to share their insights on legal recruiting and tips for getting hired as a successful lawyer in Japan. I hope you will enjoy getting to know these amazing women who I am so proud to share a profession with. I'm glad you're here and I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lawyer on Air podcast. In this episode, I share with you another diverse story of a woman lawyer working in Japan. I'm Catherine, the host of the show, and I'm a lawyer based in Tokyo for 20 years, and I love helping unlock the wisdom of the stories that women lawyers never tell. What I've learned from my career in law so far is... If you keep doing what you do with love and energy, you can find a way eventually and you can be very helpful for your clients. So don't give up and you can do whatever you want to do. Well, those are the words of Mummy Hino, who is my guest today on the podcast. Mummy is a partner at Abe Ikubo in Katayama, and she qualified as a patent attorney, a US lawyer, and she also has a pharmacist qualification. In an article published by the Japan Patent Association, Mummy told her story of having to quit her previous company due to her marriage to her husband. Pivoting, she moved on to obtain a JD and became a US attorney. She is the first chairperson of the Diversity Committee of the Japan Patent Attorney Association. Mummy's work these days is in the area of patent disputes, where she fights for her clients to protect their patents, representing the world's leading technology companies. You can check out Mummy's full bio in the show notes. On this episode, Mummy shares how she never gave up, even in the tough and lonely times, knowing no English yet deciding to boldly sign up for law school, backing herself instead of the naysayers telling her not to study law and how that spirit led her to joyfully dovetail her first career experience in the pharmaceutical space with Japan patent law and her experience in the US. And this has started her passion to be a leader for diversity and inclusion in the world of patent law in Japan. She also shares how through her lived experience of being in New York during 9-11, She was able to find true value in her skills as a lawyer to help others by putting their needs first. You will also hear how Mummy recommends the path of the patent lawyer to everyone who is considering a career in law, especially for women. She knows that from the inside, it is an attractive career because it's not physically impactful on the body. It opens up a flexible career for any life event that comes your way. And working with cutting edge technology is really rewarding, especially in this age of AI and chat GPT. And then Mummy also shares her hot tips on the best sushi place in Tokyo, her favorite bookshelf hotel in Hakone, where you can literally lie down on a bookshelf surrounded by books and other fun facts. Let's get into it. Hello, Mummy, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Kathleen. My first question, as always, is if we were meeting up in person, Mummy, where would we be? Do you have a favorite wine bar or restaurant that you love to go to? And what would be your choice of beverage off the menu today? That's a very uh, good question. Yesterday, (laughs) I went to uh, this French cafe uh, nearby, and uh, it was very nice. Uh, It's open cafe, and uh, we can see the uh, greens and the uh, blossoms blooming. So I, I think that's the place. The, the place is named Oba Canal. Oh, Oba Canal. You, you know that? Yes, I know the one. But which one is it? Because there's quite a few around Tokyo. Which one was it? It, it is nearby uh, Hotel Niotani. Oh, I know. Yeah. I have not been there for a little while, though. 
it's the best season uh, if you、mm. want to go there. That's、Ooh. nice. Oh, maybe we can go there with the person we were talking about just yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's、Sounds、a good, good idea. Right. All right. And so, what would you recommend to order off the menu? Glass of wine. What kind of wine do you like? Uh, I'm I'm not the person that who, who knows the wine very well. So any kind of a white wine would be nice. White wine sounds good. Very nice and crisp. Very good for spring season. I love、mm-hmm. it. Thank you so much. Let's do that. We'll talk about that a bit later. So, Mummy, thank you very much for coming on the show and trusting、uh, me to come and tell us your story. I would love to ask you a little bit about. Back in your early days, when you were a child, or even when you were becoming a young adult, what kinds of careers were you thinking about or dreaming about at that time? When I was a little, for some reason, I like to see the science、uh, type of things. You know, I、uh, I like to do the reading, a、uh, science book, and、mm. uh, I like the science class. So I was. Thinking maybe、uh, the science is the、uh, good direction that I should go. Eventually, my mother, my mother has this idea, so I should be a pharmacist. Right? Why <laughs> yeah, did she so, think that?、Uh, my my father happened to be a pharmacist, so ha- her idea was that you know, later in my father's career, he was uh, not a、uh, pharmacist. Pharmacist. He he was、uh, working for a pharmaceutical company. Right, but、uh, eventually he has to retire from the、uh, company. So、uh, at the time that the, in my mother's mind, it's good idea to have this a、uh, uh, little pharmacist and run by my father and uh, uh, myself. So that be、uh, her idea. So she was whispering to, to <laughs> me, you know, you should be a pharmacist. Pharmacist、oh. would be nice. So yes, and then whispering to you, I see. Yeah, whispering to me. And then I was not thinking very well, but、uh, yeah, pharmacist would be nice.、Uh, that's what I thought. And then I went to college, and、uh, did pharmacology. That was my major. Oh, I see. So her idea was that when your father retired from the pharmaceutical company,、mm-hmm. that you would be a pharmacist by that time and work with him in a little family business. Right. Oh. The- <laughs> That's kind of cute, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And could you see? You could see your father working quite hard. Did you get some idea about pharmacy work or working in a pharmaceutical company from seeing your father doing that kind of job? Yeah, the time to time that I talked to my father about the drug business and、uh, you know the developing a new、uh, drug product or you know to to help.、Uh, A patients, I thought it's very nice and a、uh, exciting job. Oh, interesting! And what do you think about that? The way that your mother told you, you know, whispered to you this, compared yeah, I, to I, say, you know, some other mothers might say, "Look, you must be a pharmacist. You've got to be a pharmacist." Do you think that was a on purpose that she did it in that way for you? I don't know、uh, what she was thinking, but、uh, she was a housewife in a ha- very young age. That she was. A teacher, but she had to step out from the、uh, work and to, to get married with my father, in a way that she want me or you know the, the daughter to keep some profession through life. So I I thought it's very good idea, and I really appreciate that she had that idea. Right, and so you did actually study to be a pharmacist, but did you ever work as a pharmacist? Ah,、uh, not exactly. <laughs> A very short moment. So I I went to、uh, study pharmacology. Pharmacology,、uh, yes. Pharmacology, and then、uh, try to take the exam to be a pharmacist. I start working with this、uh, pharmaceutical company, and、uh, so I didn't have chance to really become a pharmacist. But、uh, when I was going to college, I was、uh, being as assistant for ph- pharmacist. That was very interesting and a good experience. Was that like a part-time job? Yes. Yes. Oh, what kinds of things did you do then? Ah,、uh, go to middle-sized hospital, and the hospital has this ph- pharmaceutical department, and then there was a real pharmacist, and、uh, that a real, real pharmacist, pharmacist standing yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, standing there, and ask me to do this and that, and、oh. I, I, I did actually uh, prepare uh, some drugs for、Ooh. patients. 
Right. That's kind of a scary. <laughs> yes. Do I get it right? Do I get it wrong? <laughs> what happens? That would be quite scary, actually. Yes. Right. right. But that, but that that's very interesting. I yeah. uh, I learned a lot from that uh, part time job. Mm, what in particular did it teach you? What kind of thing did you learn? Uh that not necessary uh, to be a pharmacist, uh, specifically to pharmacist job, but the how to communicate with patients. Sometimes we need to explain, you know, what this drug does to them or, you know, that the communication with the patients. That's one thing I learned. Yeah, and you would need some kind of understanding or empathy for them and patients because they they might be quite uh, stressed when they're mm-hmm. getting their medicine and, and you need to kind of have that skill as well, right? Communicate yeah. well and have empathy, I would think. Right, right. Yeah, that, that they are patients. So, yes. Uh, we need to be nice to them and explain uh, in a very easy word, using easy word to explain them, you know, that this drug does what, what kind of uh, function. Yes. So we to have to them. be kind and explain and have empathy like we do with our clients as lawyers now. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. That, that, that experience <laughs> might help me now uh, very remotely, but uh, yeah, that was very good experience. Yes. And so you didn't become the pharmacist, but I think you did something with your pharmacy qualification, correct? Mm-hmm. That's right. So uh, after I worked with the pharmaceutical company as a pharmacist researcher, and that, that's kind of a ph- pharmacist job, but uh, then I, I need to resign from the uh, position. And then I, I became a managing pharmacist for this uh, very tiny factory. What what does a research pharmacist do that's different to a pharmacist? I have no idea. <laughs> ah, yeah, so when I was working with this uh, pharmaceutical company, a uh, pharmaceutical company has this uh, uh, researching laboratory, ah. and they have a lot of uh, uh, researching pharmacists. It doesn't have to be pharmacists, but uh, there are many researchers there working hmm. there. At the beginning, that was very interesting project. Do you know the antibiotics, right? Yes, I do. Antibiotics, yeah, and, yes. Uh, we need because, them. Right. And the antibiotics, in order to make antibiotics, we need to do the farm- fermentation of the uh, yeast and the germs. They are the ones who, who make the antibiotics. So we have a lot of fermentation glass containers around <gasps> me. Yes. <laughs> and, and try to find the good uh, antibiotics. That, that was a very interesting project. Did you enjoy that job? Well, it sounds like you really enjoyed that job. Yeah. Uh, that, compared that to, fun. say, being a pharmacist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. But, uh, I, and then I uh, moved to another project that was uh, using the, res- the resulting products that the, what the jam made mm. uh, to, to find a good drug against cancer. How long? How many years were you doing the pharmaceutical research, research, yeah, and also I, you know managing that smaller uh, department in the company? Mm-hmm. I worked with the pharmaceutical company uh, only three years. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the job, but uh, I got mar- married this guy who is working with uh, another pharmaceutical company. So uh, uh, it was difficult for me to to be there. Right. So Mm. that's an interesting story, isn't it? Because these days, I don't think really people worry so much about somebody who works in another company. I can even think of in my friends and people I know in Tokyo, there are lawyers who work in private practice, both in different private practices, and they're married Mm. or seeing each other. And I know of a couple who are both in-house and they are continuing to keep in their jobs, male and female. So it's very interesting, isn't it, that you had to leave because of your you know, husband-to-be being in another pharmaceutical company. How was that for you? Yeah, I was. I, I didn't think of you know, what would happen when I decided to get married with this guy uh, working for another company, but I saw the results and I was not very happy, but... Uh, I couldn't do anything, so I de- decided to leave the company and uh, uh, work for another uh, company. 
So how did they find out that he's in another company? Is there some pressure as well at that time to, you know, there could be some competition. I'm thinking they might think you are releasing secrets or something. Why? Mm. What was the theory behind it? I, I think so. it is it is not open, openly told me or anything, but uh, mm. it's a rather invisible pressure type of things. Mm. And uh, I don't know if it is openly told then i can i can maybe have arguments against against that theory but uh yeah so uh, it was very difficult because it wasn't told it was not openly told but uh, the invisible type of pressure and yes, that's <laughs> yeah, hard mm. yeah that's hard but uh after uh several decades <laughs> it turned out to be uh great things happened to me you know, if uh, it didn't happen to me, then I probably uh, kept working with this same company. That, that that company was great, and uh, I I didn't have any problem with that. But uh, eventually, I need to leave the company anyway because uh, my husband was sent to the United States sometime later, and if that happened, then I need to. Probably it was difficult for me to keep the position anyway. And then uh, because of that, things happened. I became a patent attorney, as you know. And that, yes. So and this is the remarkable into... thing, isn't it? Is that yeah. from something that was so horrible, that was an invisible pressure, you had to leave. Mm -hmm. But we sometimes call it a silver lining, don't we? The the thing that happened that we didn't expect to happen that's actually made you go into the area of law or into the, the job that you really wanted or the experience that you wanted to have in your life. So the negative turned into a positive for you. Exactly, exactly. Now I can tell that that was exactly what now happened. Now you can tell that story, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, huh. but uh, at that time I was very unhappy. Um, Right. So what happened then? You left that company and you're probably not feeling very happy about it. Mm -hmm. But what happens then to let you also, I think, go to the US with your husband, correct? Mm -hmm. And That's start right. doing that process of becoming a patent attorney. Tell us about that bit of the journey. It sounds very interesting. Sure, sure. So as I said, I became a managing pharmacist for a tiny factory based on the reason uh, i uh, i need to leave the company i cannot find any other uh, position similar to the player one so i was mm -hmm. thinking maybe managing pharmacists would be nice but it wasn't it was really not exciting job at all so i uh, kept thinking thinking what i can do uh, mm. and then uh, i found one of my friends from college became a patent attorney mm. and uh, I didn't even think about uh, there. there's a job like that in the world. Uh, what is patent attorney? And mm. I, I didn't I didn't know uh, at all about patents. So uh, I I started checking what patent attorney does and then I thought it's interesting. And then I start um, seeking position with the uh, patent firm and mm. I at the same time I was studying uh, for patent attorney and uh, I, I passed the exam and I, I became a patent attorney. And uh, as soon as I became a patent attorney, my husband was sent to the United States and I, I decided to go with him. Oh, okay. So you did the patent attorney exam in Japan mm -hmm. and you, That's while right. you were doing that, you were also applying for a position with a patent attorney firm. Yes. That's right. Ah, so you can do that. You can actually do the exam study while you're working for a patent law office. That's right. Oh, how long does it take to study for the patent exam for when you did it? And is it the same now? Uh, I was studying about uh, less than two years. Hmm. And then, uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad. So I became a patent attorney. Wow, it's amazing though, isn't it? That you have this conversation with a friend who's this patent attorney and it starts you on another path to research mm -hmm. and find out about it. What did that tell you then about yourself that you can move from one thing where you are let go by the invisible pressure and then do a different path that you never thought about? How does that make you 
feel now looking back at that person, mummy san who was, you know, <laughs> doing that in the middle? How does it, how is your feeling now about that time and yourself, the kind of person you are now? Mm. Looking back, I don't remember much, but uh, at that time, I didn't have any other choice. Mm. So mm. Uh, I was desperate. I needed to find something I, I can do. And then uh, it turned to be a uh, great, uh, it, it was a very really good choice. <laughs> sure. Yeah. What happened then when you went to the USA? Did you find another experience there? Yeah, so uh, then I went to the United States. I didn't even speak English at the time, <laughs> and it was it was very very hard. Yes, uh, I didn't have any anything to do, and I cannot speak the word. <laughs> it was very hard time, but uh, I I had plenty of time. I didn't have a child back then, so I had plenty of time, and I was thinking maybe would I dare to go to law school. Mm. So I uh, I started uh, preparing for entering uh, law school. And, so uh, hang on, you've got no English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you say, but you think you'll go to law school? All right. <laughs> and then oh, wow, yeah, but, where is that confidence coming from? That's incredible. That, there, there's no confidence. There's no but, confidence. <laughs> but but again, I was desperate. I was so lonely. I didn't have anything to do. And uh, then I, I, as I said, that I just had uh, plenty of time. So if I have plenty of time, maybe I can do something. <laughs> oh, great yeah. comment. I mean, it's, yeah, you have the no confidence or you don't have any <laughs> you, anything there, but you've got the time and the, the right. way to apply yourself to something and fix and get out of that where you right. were, that funk or that um, situation where you said you were desperate and lonely. Wow, that's amazing <laughs> that you turned it around. That's true. I, I think there, there are many friends told me, you know, you, you cannot even speak English well <laughs> and you, you forget it. You should not, you mm. cannot go to law school and just enjoy the weather. I, I was, I was enjoy living the weather. Uh, yeah. I, I was living in San Diego. So the oh, weather yes. was very nice, gorgeous. Yes. So just, uh, you know, you should, you should enjoy the life in California and, uh, you know, that, that's the, that's the way that you want to spend time. You, you don't want to spend time to just, you know, sitting and studying for <laughs> entrance, you know, but, but you uh, ignored them. <laughs> right. Why did you, why did you do that? Why did you just know I'm going to go to university? Why did you do that? I don't know. I just, uh, curious, you know, but. <laughs> But people are doing that in a law school. I I watched the movie called oh. Paper Chase. Yes, oh, yeah, I that's know an the old one. Movie in yeah, seventies. But uh, that's about the Harvard Law School yes. students. Yes, and they had a very hard time. But uh, I cannot go to Harvard. But uh, I just want to see, you know, how people are doing in law school. Right, and how do people do in law school? And how was it for you? Did they accept you? Did you become part of their community? How did it go studying there? Uh, it was all very, very interesting experience. Uh, it was very hard. I, I went to law school for three years, and especially in the first year, uh, it was very, very hard. First of all, that I tried to find a Japanese friend, but mm. uh, I couldn't find any Japanese, mm. so uh, I gave up. And I was, uh, I was talking to the American mm. friends. Mm. They were they were even finding that the law school study is very hard, and they were crying. <laughs> and then I I complained to them, you know, that you you are, ha are having a hard time, but uh, I have m even harder time because I I have you know difficulty with the language. And they said, you know, the uh, legal is a jargon anyway, so it's the same. It's oh. not the same. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I think if you understand English, you actually have a, a little advantage on the legalese, right? Right, right. But uh, oh. yeah, so that, that was, mm. looking back, that was fun, but uh, that was very, very difficult. Right. And so what happened after law school? Actually, in the middle of law school, uh, the second year, oh. after the second year, everybody uh, is trying to apply for summer program with the law firms. So I was talking to uh, friends, they are applying mm -hmm. for a summer program. I thought that it's a good idea for me to do that the same. And then I applied for several law firms. And the one 
law firm uh, kindly offered me a summer position, and then I did the summer associate program. That was that was really a fun. Yeah, I bet it was fun. Were you in the same San Diego area, or did you have to move? Oh, I went to law school in New Jersey. Oh, right, so, New Jersey. So the law firm I applied for are uh, uh, located in New York City. Wow, cool. And so right. what happened? Did you, you did that. Did they take you on afterwards as well? Because I know often in the US style of the summer law firm program, the associate program, you come back to work right. for them. Yeah? I didn't know uh, very well, but I, I was, again, curious, you know, what the summer program is. I, I had a good time, good experience. Then uh, I, I, I realized that's a, that's a part of the process to find a new associate. And then after the summer, I wasn't sure that they will uh, offer me the position, but mm-hmm. the, actually they did. I, mm. I was surprised. So they, they offered me the uh, associate position after I finished the law school. And I was so excited. Right. Great. I mean, because now we know that that process is there, that the summer yeah. law, <laughs> summer associate program leads to the process of being asked to come and join them. But right. you were doing this. It wasn't there. No one really shared the information. So this is quite mm-hmm. amazing for you to have done that. And you, you right. got back into that firm. What was interesting about that? What do you remember about those days when you were in the firm as a well, you're a newly qualified lawyer because you must have done the bar at some point as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but by exam, right after the three-year uh, law yes. school, yes. I took the bar exam. But yes. uh, even before that, they were kind enough for me to uh, do the part-time job as a clerk. So I I went to the law firm two days a week or so and did the, some you know assistant work for lawyers. Right. Was it anything like all of this? Was it anything, the study and coming into the law firm? Was it anything like the paper chase or any other TV programs you saw? Or was it quite different? It's uh, Yeah, I didn't see the TV program for law, law. Uh, law firm, but uh, yeah, the <laughs> law school, it's, uh, it's interesting that the people are competing with each other. Yes. For example, every day when I uh, I go to law school and everybody go to law school. They, they are wearing jeans and, you know, the very relaxing uh, outfit. But uh, sometimes I wear suits and then they ask me why you are wearing suits. And then I said, uh, I have interview with this law firm. And then uh, they are, they become very hostile. <laughs> <laughs> and then the which law firm are you going? And then I, I say, you know, I'm, I'm going to the city. <laughs> Then, then they they got even more hostile. So, so there there's some competition among mm-hmm. the students. I myself is not very great student. Uh, you know that you, you can tell that because of the uh, one one thing is uh, language skills. So I'm not great student, but uh, there there are even you know there are many many great student, but uh, they have it's not easy for them to to get the position in the New York City's law firm. It's also very competitive, so uh, I thought it's very interesting. Very I've interesting. Never, I, I've never experienced that kind of comp- competition when I was studying in a uh, college in uh, Japan. Mm. How do you deal with jealous people or hostile people? What's your tip when you find that? Because this is, happens all through life. People will be hostile or envious or jealous of what you got or they think that they didn't get. How do you handle that? I sometimes intentionally or unintentionally ignore them. I, I mean, not not the way that, that it's not nice. Uh, I just don't realize what they're trying to do to me. It's just, uh, you know, keep the, everything peaceful. Yeah, and don't let it yeah. affect you. So you just right. let it ride. Yeah, right, I get right. you. I see. Interesting. Did it? What did it teach you though? That this is maybe something that people, who even you think they may have an advantage, then it's flipped and they see you have an advantage. How does that make you feel? You did you just carry on, or did it make it make you feel stronger to carry on? I'm not sure what happened with you then. I don't know. There are some kind of people that they always try to be very competitive or mm. try sometimes uh, do uh, nasty things, but. Mm. Uh, they cannot become happy anyway, you know, that if they do something like that and they cannot be happy. So uh, I just, you know, that 
just keep away from them. Uh, that mm. makes ourselves, you know, the, the peaceful. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, if they're not happy, they're never going to be happy by trying to make others unhappy. Well done. Okay. That's really great. So you, you stayed with that firm for a little while and did you return yes. then to Japan? Right. So I stayed stay there for four years and then I came back to Japan. Uh, you know, the, you remember that at that time, uh, 911 happened. Oh, yes. That, that's a long time ago. But uh, yeah, mm. when uh, I was working with this firm located in uh, midtown of the New York City, yes. Uh, the 911 happened. Must have been I, very terrible, a terrible experience. Terrible, terrible experience. And then uh, after that, there are very good things and bad things. The good thing is that uh, I saw um, right after the, what happened, all the New York City lawyers uh, united and have this uh, um, organized uh, matching system. Um, the lawyers volunteer to help the people who had difficulties uh, because of the uh, terrorism. And then I, I did some volunteer work. That was a, that was a great uh, experience. That's wow. a good thing. Yes, very fulfilling and also just so helpful. I didn't know that that kind of system had been set up after 9-11 right. so you were matching your skills to help other people who were affected mm -hmm. through the terrorist attacks right yeah the people had difficulty for example that there's a lady uh, who was working with this uh, uh, office located nearby ground zero mm. and then uh, the company sent her uh, like a two two hours away from the uh, original office and she had difficulty. Mm. So she asked me to write a letter. <laughs> so I wrote a letter to the employer. Another thing, uh, I forgot what I did, but uh, the, uh, there was another person who, who has a family uh, she couldn't find. And then, uh, I don't know, in that case that we, we need to, the lawyer need to uh, fill the paper for, the, the temporary that the that, that person is missing uh right. the, that, that maybe insurance uh yes. receiving the insurance or the money it's the government money right and like you that. were helping people do that mm -hmm. and they weren't necessarily i'm not saying they're not japanese people these are reg regular people living in new york city right that's right that's right wow how was that experience for you yeah i was just uh, amazed that you know the uh that that is like a few days after the event. And you're so also very... dealing with what happened with you during this, right? You're helping others, but yeah. you're dealing with this whole process of this ex terrible experience right. in your own life, as well yeah. as then going and taking a step to help others. That's really incredible. Mm -hmm. Tell mm -hmm. us a bit more if you're, if you're able to. Yeah, so uh, uh, right after the event, there, there was an announcement among the lawyers so there, there was a, like a city hall that there is a, a organization explaining how the lawyers can help people. I went there for the meeting and uh, uh, listening what I, we can do. And there is an application that they established quickly after the event. So if I uh, uh, enter the uh, application that I can find someone, it's just a matching application. And I can find the people who need the help and I can do something for them. And then we can meet mm. meet up and uh, right. uh, yeah, talk. You know what I can do for them. I was so impressed that you know someone who, who organized this system so quickly, and there are many people who can volunteer that kind of uh, work. Yeah, it's amazing. It takes an amazing person, I think, to mobilize yeah. after an event like that and to get mm -hmm. people to come together to help others. Do Do you know if the letter that you wrote? for the lady helped her get some ease for the distance that she had to yeah, travel I, and yeah. I vaguely remember yeah that she she had some uh resolution good so, yes. uh, my my letter <laughs> helped really her great. a little bit <laughs> did that experience change you in any way yeah i of course i feel good and uh, i feel i don't know i thought it's it's great that i i was a lawyer but my my regular job is just you know uh, writing a patent application or you know the, the thinking about the patent. That's that's also exciting. But uh, 
regular lawyer job is also uh, fulfilling and uh, feel great for, for helping people. Yeah, to help people. It's sort of the ultimate purpose of us. I think, I think you do that through writing patents as well, but this is a different way of being a lawyer and, and directly helping people in, in their troubles. Yeah, you exactly. Found that way. Wow. Okay. So moving from there, though, you, you did come back to Japan. And what happened then? Yeah, so I, I said that that's that there's a good thing and bad thing. Yes. Good thing is, as I said, that the great experience mm. uh, through the uh, volunteer work. But the bad thing is that I saw a um, uh, little bit the mood for people's uh, minds a little bit changed after the 9-11. For example, that uh, we need to uh, be careful that a not very good patriotism among the uh, American people oh. and some some people I think that the media also talks about that somehow remember Pearl Harbor and uh, mm. I cannot explain very well but uh, uh, I think I know what you're saying though in that yeah. just the way it impacted people brought up yeah. all kinds of memories or stories that they had heard before or maybe mm -hmm. brought out biases or assumptions It brought out so many good things, as you say, people to help and volunteer and make other people's lives mm -hmm. really so much more easier after that terrible situation. But on the other side of things, some other things that were a bit darker happened as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So after uh, like exactly one year after the event, I decided to come back to Japan maybe it was a good time to to come back my parents are not very young uh so i maybe maybe it's a good time to oh, oh i forgot to mention my husband was in the us uh for his uh, assignment from the from the company mm. but uh, he he had been uh, sent back to japan when when i was going to law school in the middle of law school so oh, I, I see. we were we were living separately for mm. at the time that for four years right so it, it was time to for me to come back to japan and he wasn't there with you when this 9 11 happened right after 9 11 he flew to that the new jersey to see me you know how okay. it's going yes and he, he said that there was no one on the airplane oh. wow yeah i'm glad That's he came to see you time. Yeah, very strange times. I'm glad he did come and visit you, though. That would be mm -hmm. the thing that you would want to happen. So that's good. So you did then return to Japan after mm -hmm. all of this. And I know that right. we are, yeah, there's so much more would have happened to you um, during this period, but you did eventually return to Japan. And did you take up a law role when you came back? I tried to find a position uh, somewhere in Japan. And then I realized that I'm originally from Osaka, so I tried to find uh, any position in Osaka, but I couldn't find any. So I uh, decided to come to Tokyo, and then uh, I worked with this firm. I mainly working as a, a Japanese patent attorney, but uh, sometimes I uh, do the work for uh, U.S. law. Yes. So uh, yeah, so it is nice combination. I have a variety variety of work. I can. Uh, use of the experience I uh, got from the law firm mm. Or, uh, mm. in the US. Brilliant. And what happened then? Did you continue working in that firm? It sounds really nice to have that combination of the two kinds of work that you were doing. What happened? Yeah, the, it is exciting to do the work as a Japanese patent attorney. Uh, uh, major work for patent attorney is uh, writing a patent application, but uh, Right now, that my uh, uh, my focus is more on the uh, litigation side uh, or equality trials, more dispute <laughs> type. So, so people are fighting, and I, I help that the clients either protect their patents or uh, enforce their patents, and that's that's very exciting. It's very sometimes it's a very difficult job, but uh, it's very nice profession to to help clients 
Yeah, because I was going to ask you what you love about your work, what you find really satisfying and rewarding and what you're proud of. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of uh, what I'm doing now. I hope that I can I can help clients see me that they're helpful. I'm sure. And mm -hmm. what are some of your highlights then? Is there something that's happened in your career in the this fighting the disputes, right? Protecting or fighting. <laughs> Is there something that you've found that has been really quite a professional or career highlight for you so far? Mm, my major was the pharmacology, right? That back then when I was a college student. So my, my technical background is pharmaceutical science. And then uh, I'm working with the pharmaceutical company clients uh, many of the uh, pharmaceutical company uh, clients right now, they using the uh, technical background as pharmacist. And uh, also I can use the patent law experience, patent law knowledge. The combination should be uh, very helpful for pharmaceutical clients. And uh, also not just a uh, uh, patent law, I do learn a lot about uh, pharmaceutical affairs, the regulatory law, hopefully that that also help for clients. Uh, that's a that's a highlight, uh, one highlight. Mm. Another is uh, so based on the background that I uh, had experience working with the uh, US law firm, I had a close border patent litigation time to time, the very big one. And uh, at the time that I can help uh, foreign clients, U.S. clients, European clients, uh, based on the knowledge the, uh, when I was working with the U.S. law firm. So that's that's two highlights I have. Mm, that's great. And do those clients say thank you so much to you or do you get some kind of feedback on how you're doing with your work or is it sometimes no news is good news, you know, that if they say nothing, then that means you've done a good job. How is it in your particular field? Time to time that I find that pharmaceutical company clients appreciate the, my, my technical background and also uh, the knowledge about the regulatory uh, law, uh, especially foreign clients. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult for them to understand the Japanese system. And uh, I try to explain them, you know, how it works. And uh, they uh, appreciate that. So I, I feel very happy uh, yeah. to, to help them. That's great, isn't it? When you can bridge those two and you've been the one to be the connector between those two different spheres. It's really mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I'd like you to finish this sentence for me, Mami-san. Um, the most important thing I have learned from my career in law so far is? Mm. If you keep doing that with the love or energy, you can find a way eventually, and uh, you can you can be very helpful for clients. So if you do not give up, you can do whatever you want to do. Oh, that's so good. I think that's <laughs> really you, isn't it? You know, you've kept going and you've found a way to help clients um, not give up. That's your theme, isn't it? To not give yes. up. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. And you, outside of your day-to-day -day work, you've also expanded and kept up your volunteer work, I believe, with the Japan Patent Attorney Association. Yes. I'm doing now with the, uh, working with the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. That's very interesting and a new new field that I can I can work with. What does that committee do? It's a new field you're saying. So what is so the committee is newly established and you're trying to get more is it DEI uh, diversity, equity and inclusion across the uh, patent attorney groups? Yes. Uh, so one thing is that uh, JPA, Japan Patent Attorney Association, established this uh, committee two years ago, and uh, I was chairperson for two years. But uh, you're so you're question... the first chairperson of yes, this committee. First chairperson. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, you you ask me, you know, what hmm. we do? That's hmm. uh, that's a very difficult question. So. Uh, <laughs> I think many people agree that it's it's good thing to promote diversity or inclusion 
but uh, it's very difficult what we can do for that. I think for two years we have been thinking and struggling what what we should do and what we can do. Uh, we did uh, some uh, meetings or seminar, but uh, yeah, I think we are still thinking you know, what we can do. Mm. Well, maybe it's a case of the different industries or sectors that have got patent attorneys working and gathering the list together and having a, maybe you could have a big event or a smallish big event where people come together and you at least network. Right. And find out who is there and what do they want? What do they think? might be necessary yes. right yes that that's a great idea yeah so gathering people mm. uh it, it's a good thing but i i also found that there are many people who had different perspective uh different idea so so the biggest goal is to promote diversity but that there are so many variety of the ideas so uh, sometimes you know that people are uh, facing totally different directions and uh, it's not easy but uh, that, that's also a meaningful committee or me meaningful project that we should mm. keep doing because that is the different perspectives and ideas is indeed diversity isn't it that's that's right you're right yeah that's <laughs> exactly <laughs> diversity <laughs> so there may be the core areas that you can all agree on and then there might be different sort of committees or subcommittees where people can do different things and you could even think about including an international committee or group that you bring that's in right. some of the US patent attorneys who are working here because there's a few Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Actually, that I start, I joined this uh, another uh, mm. committee just established by uh, AIPPI. That's an <laughs> international organization. Uh, they established this committee, but uh, this committee is also is struggling now. You know what we should do. So this oh. is very difficult area. I, I Interesting. guess. Interesting. But even <laughs> if you had a quite light not very serious. I don't mean that you're not serious. I mean that just lightly having a little group meeting where you're trying to do that, we're trying to do this. Is there somewhere we can collaborate to try and go further forward? I think if we always think about what we can't do, it never goes further forward. But with someone like you there, and perhaps the person who's at AIPPI, there might be a chance there to do more bridging than you might think. It sounds a little bit like most things, there's always diverging opinions, but it could have some potential. It's probably not easy, but it's maybe something that's really worthwhile to take forward. I think you're right that, you know, it's meaningful uh, to, to mm. have this uh, committee. So, uh, yes, we, mm. we should keep doing, you know, whatever that we can do. Sure. How many women patent attorneys are there in Japan? Uh, women patent attorneys... I don't know the number, but I know the uh, percentage. Yes. Uh, the women is 16% oh, of the I entire see. patent attorneys. Quite low. Right, quite low. So we are not happy about that. But mm. the, uh, if you see the uh, most recent patent attorney just uh, you know, passed the exam, uh, it's more than 30%. Okay. So, so, so it's... if you wait... Uh, <laughs> If you wait long, then uh, that we, we will, you know, probably have the more than 30% women. Is there some reason for the increase in the people who are passing or sitting the exam and coming further forward? Is there something there that's triggering people to become patent attorneys? I don't know, but uh, in, in order to be a patent attorney, you don't have to be STEM, that science background people. But uh, I think the major part of the uh, work is you know for the science so it, it's nice to have a science background and uh, as you know that there are not many science background female so that's one problem that we we had we, we cannot have the you know 50 percent uh, patent attorneys uh, female patent attorneys but uh, as you said that why we are uh, that we have a slightly more uh, percentage than before I found this profession it's very good for female. You don't need the physical power and, uh, you know, you, you can sit and clean uh, work. But the character of this work, uh, if you think about it, it's it's good for female. And uh, especially you, if you have life event, like if you have child or you get married or, you know, that you have sick family, you can keep the work, I don't know, you can change the uh, workload for some time. And then eventually come back. I, I think if you 
if you have a, a patent attorney uh, registered license, you can do that. So it's it's good for female. That's what hopefully that people realize mm. and have more more number of the female right. uh, taking exam. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm really glad to hear that. And would you think that the advice for the younger lawyers, perhaps, or younger people coming through, that that to think about being a patent attorney? Yeah, I really recommend that the young young female uh, try to think about. You know, this, this is a great profession. As I just explained, it's it's very flexible, and you can learn a lot from the day to day work. It's very exciting that you can see clients and listening the uh, new technology, mm. uh, you know, the cutting edge technology, and you can work on that. It's very exciting. I never get bored oh. because, uh, you know, I can learn uh, many good new technology every day. So it's exciting work and uh, it's flexible and good for female uh, lifestyle. This might be uh, one uh, good candidate. Mm. For your future career. Wonderful. And would you have any other advice for young people who are thinking about a career in law? If you put a, a lot of effort and if you study a lot, you can be a great lawyer. I, I believe that I want to be a great lawyer. And doesn't matter whether you are a man or women. So this is this is something that you, you want to think of and that. Uh, there might be still glass ceiling even for lawyer profession, but uh, comparing to other field, I think it's less. So right. uh, th this is a great profession. You just keep working and uh, uh, try to be a great lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And what about the future of law? Any ideas or thoughts or vision that you see for the next five or so years about this field of law as opportunities that you can see? I think it's changing, but uh, I don't know how it will change. <laughs> I hope, I hope that uh, it will change in a good way. But uh, yes. I don't know. And now you know, as you know, that there are many technology emerging, like uh, AI or ChatGPT, or you know, the uh, everything is uh, uh, on internet. If we can use in a good way, that we can save our time and. The Still, we can uh, achieve the better results. That'd be great. If we can use them uh, in a good way, that, that we, we can see a bright future. But mm. if we cannot do that, if we do it wrong free, uh, mm. I'm not sure that uh, we, we can head good uh, direction. But uh, I'm just a you know op optimistic person. Yes. So I, yes. I, I see that's a bright Bright future coming Great. coming soon. <laughs> I think you're right, especially this chat GPT. There's such a lot happening around that at the moment. I heard a couple right. of countries uh, say that it's actually against the law. I heard on the uh, NHK this morning, and I was thinking mm. that's going to make things very interesting. Mm. Mm. Well, anything else, uh, Mami san, that we didn't cover today that you wanted to mention or something you did talk about that you might want to re emphasize again? I. I really enjoyed the conversation with you and I really uh, appreciate that I, you, you give me this opportunity. Talking about diversity or inclusion, I think what you have been doing this channel uh, is very useful to show people, you know, that there are many variety of people are doing their work uh, very nicely. I think that what, what you have been done, it's great. I, Thank you. I like this. <laughs> Since I've done a variety, I want to show others too that there are. I'm not just an exception, that I'm not just unusual in myself, that there are plenty of other people who actually have not had a traditional pathway in law and have met, had many challenges along the way and really interesting experiences that have happened to help their growth and to become a person that actually collaborates and contributes back into the community exactly in the way that you have been doing uh, and as you, as you did in the United States as well. And so those people like you and anybody who's been on the show and future guests, that's my aim. So I'm glad you've said that. Thank you very much. It is a channel to show people there is a variety of work that you can do. I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Thank you. And as we finish up, I usually finish up the show on a lighter note with some quick 
questions, just a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> um, and one of them is your favorite Japanese food that you love, and where can I get it in Tokyo or Osaka? It might be actually. There are so many food that I like. <laughs> mm, <laughs> that's a, that's a very good. It's a very hard question, isn't it? <laughs> there are several places that I I keep going, but that there's one uh, sushi place I, I love, and I go there for twenty years, last twenty years. You you want the name of the sushi? Yes, restaurant? please tell me. Uh, I'm writing uh, it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that that sushi restaurant's name is Suzu. Yes, Suzu. Suzu located <laughs> in Yotsuya. Oh, okay. Hmm, okay, maybe we can go there. <laughs> um, and the place. In, something. Yes, thank you. The place in Japan that you most recommend people visit when they come here. Oh, recently I found this uh, uh, place, Hakone Honbako. Hakone Honbako bookshelf. Ah, oh. Honbako. Yes, Honbako. I heard, I heard you. Yeah. Yeah. The the that place is located in Hakone. It has nice uh, onsen, the hot spring. But the the feature, the great feature of this uh, hotel is they have tons of uh, uh, interesting books and bookshelves. Ah. So it's surrounded the bookshelves, and you can pick whatever that books that you like, and Ooh. you can read it for Exciting. all day. Right. You, you can even uh, sit in the bookshelf or, or lie down in the book, bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are many uh, places and caves in, inside the hotel, and you can, oh, you can just uh, you know, sit there and uh, read the books. It's so much fun to, to wow. be there. Wow, I love it. <laughs> Have you been there? Yeah, I, I've been oh. there several times. And uh, it's very, very nice. And oh, they have good food too. That sounds like so much fun. Goodness me. Wow, well, mm -hmm. great. And what's your favorite saying in Japanese or English even? Kotowaza, right? Kotowaza. I didn't think about <laughs> that question. No, mm. it's, it's whatever mm -hmm. you think. There might be something that you find yourself saying quite a lot. Let and from, me, for me, me when I think of you, I think of akirame nai de or um, you know, kanosuku yaru, like to not give up and to do things with a spirit of enjoyment. That's what I feel when I think about you and hear your story. Then I, I like that. <laughs> okay, we'll give you that one then. <laughs> and if you weren't being a lawyer, a patent attorney, what would you be doing? You know, at the be beginning of the, my career, mm. I was very happy working with the laboratory. So I... I Maybe I kept doing the laboratory research. And something about you that a lot of people don't know. People may not think uh, I'm, I don't know the English word, samishigariya. <laughs> oh, that you're not someone who's, mm, what do we call it, samishigariya? When, when I'm alone, I, I miss people so much, oh. a little bit too much or something like that. Okay, um, so you mm. can get a bit blue. Sometimes yeah. people call it blue, right? That's something <laughs> yeah, that we yeah. wouldn't know. So to look after you, don't let mummy be alone. <laughs> um, look after her when yes. you think she might be by herself. That's really great to know, actually. I think that's <laughs> wonderful. Well, mummy, thank you so much. We've come to an at the end of our chat today, but I really thank you again for coming on the podcast. It's been such a pleasure to speak with you. I, I didn't realise you'd had that experience through 9-11 and how it's actually changed you and impacted you with things that you do and the way that you do your work. I really appreciate you coming on the show and telling us that as well as all your other stories. For people who have listened to this and would like to connect with you and learn a bit more, where's the best place that they can reach out to you? Would that be LinkedIn or somewhere else? Yeah, LinkedIn. Uh, please look up LinkedIn. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes. We'll put your LinkedIn uh, profile link into the show notes. And so for anyone who is listening, if you have been listening and enjoyed it and are inspired to do something different, please do share it with your friends, share it with us. Tell us what you thought about this episode, what it, what it meant to you, uh, what you really liked about it. We'd love to hear that. Uh, later going on and also if you did enjoy it please share it with somebody else who you think would love to lead a lawyer extraordinaire life just like mummy we've come to the end of today so thanks all everybody for listening thank you very very much cheers come pie and bye for now 
Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of Lawyer On Air. I really hope that you were inspired by the story you heard and that you discovered something new about women in the law. Please subscribe to the show so that you don't miss future episodes. And if you can think of even just one person to share this episode with, that would make my day. I invite you to connect with me to talk more. Jump on over to LinkedIn or Instagram where you can find me or send me a message via my website contact page. That's all from me today. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Lawyer On Air. Cheers, come pie, and bye for now.